Hello, everyone. Welcome into TechSags Rewind, presented by Yeti, the fan show guys, brought to you by Draw Construction here in studio with us. And my guys, I mean, I've been here for two years in, in a few game, games, right? It's the most optimistic maroon juice I have seen, the maroon Kool-Aid, from you all in the entire time I'm here. Why? Because we look good in all phases for once. We're guzzling it. Yeah, because the Wrecking Crew is back. Yeah. And we have, we have a matchup that suits us this week. I like it. No, I like it all. Ma the matchup is 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 the big one. All right, this was episode three thousand one hundred and thirty-five. Ob did his uh, week six uh, Heisman watch, and uh, I asked about Max. Not gonna get there for a while, but hey, I can ask about it because we're drinking the maroon Kool Aid, right? Yeah. McGee and Swope in studio, they were great. We had Schloss in studio with Brawny. Good times because they got their first uh, fall ball game tomorrow against HCU. And these gentlemen, these knuckleheads, I call them the fan show guys. That and more here on the Texax Rewind. Uh, and he, look, the biggest thing for Jordan Travis, and he needs to start putting up some numbers, but he's got wins, or he's led his team to wins over Clemson and LSU. Yep. Yeah. Number four on my list is Shadur Sanders. He bounced back from that poor performance uh, against Oregon. He threw for 371 yards and four touchdowns in that loss to USC. But don't blame him. He scored 41 points, so he can't put that loss on him. He also rushed for 50 yards. You yep. know that had a had a touchdown overall, completing 74.8 percent of his passes for 1,000. 781 yards and 15 touchdowns. Pretty darn good season. It is a pretty darn good season. Speaking of not blaming a quarterback for a loss, uh, next on my list is Jaden Daniels of LSU. Uh, you know, he threw for 414 yards and four touchdowns and rushed for 99 yards and a touchdown he was in a loss. In a loss, yeah. In a 55-49 loss to Did LSU. Ole Miss's, was Ole Miss's defense uh, out there on the field? Uh, they were out out there on the field. Oh, they were. Okay. Especially on the last play when he threw a pass that deflected off his receiver's yeah. hands. They were that in the end zone. By the way, side note, that 55 points is the most, or the 49 points, I should say, is the most points LSU has ever scored in a loss in regulation. Huh. The most points they've ever scored in a loss was 72. But that was a seven-overtime game against who? Texas A&M. Your a Texas A&M Aggies. So, that's right. So, uh, yeah, Jaden Daniels, despite the, a loss, had a huge game last week. Number two, Caleb Williams, the USC quarterback. Look, he's making a strong, very strong bid to join Archie Griffin as the only two-time Heisman recipient last week in that game against Colorado. He threw six touchdown ca passes. Count them. Six, a half dozen touchdown passes in one game against Colorado. Completed 30 of 40 for 403 yards uh, overall this season. 1,603 yards and 21, count them, 21 touchdowns. I like it. He's rushed for three, too. Yeah. Can you make some of the mistakes we've seen in these? Because you talked about this team not being – um, the score wasn't indicative of the thorough beating because of the mistakes, the fumbles, the interceptions, the false starts, the drop balls in the red zone, like all these things. Can they beat Bama with that recipe? I don't think you can. No, no, it's hard to win really any football game. You got to eliminate those penalties, got to eliminate the drops, got to eliminate, um, you know, all that stuff, shooting yourself in the foot, jumping off sides. And that all comes down to just being focused. Uh, Bottom line, our team's got to be more focused than Alabama, uh, you know. And I think that if we're focused and we're ready, and you know we prepare correctly, which I know those coaches have these guys, you know, ready to go, I think we can, you know, we can we can win this game yeah. uh, by a couple touchdowns, honestly. But I think we've got more talent, uh, which is crazy to say, we've got more talent than Alabama, um, and so you'd love to see or the right it. talent, I'd love to maybe. see it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Steven? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm right there with Swopey. Like, I, I feel like this is the year where we're saying we're better on paper, which is crazy. Um, it's been, it feels like it's been an uphill, uphill battle to get to where we are today. But, um, you know, a vast majority of the positions on the field, you're going to say, hey, I'm going I'm to take my guy over their guy. And mm -hmm. that's a good sign. Now, what do they have that we don't? Well, they've won a lot of football games over there. Those guys in the locker room, yeah. that coach, they know how to run a program. They know how to win. And they're going to come in here ready to go. And when you have an Alabama team that has a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, that can be dangerous too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That's what worries me. But A&M should have the biggest chip on their shoulder after the way last season went. And knowing that they could have beaten this team two years in a row on that last play. Like, there's a lot of on our You our hope so, but sometimes athletes can fall victim to reading their recent press clippings right yeah 
good and bad. I wrote a story, it'll be coming out later on the site, David, about this freshman position player group. And I know that there's going to be a lot of pitchers as well that play a really big role in y'all's season probably. Uh, you, you never know, fall ball phenoms and the mm -hmm. real thing are different. But, I, I mean, you said this is the most talented freshman group you've ever had. It, what is it? Is it just the talent, or are you more surprised about the production early on? Uh, I would say all of it. I would say just watching their – pure talent so talent to me is you know the, the five tools hit run throw uh, uh defense and, and 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 hit for power and so just you you look at those tools and then you watch how they take that into a ball game uh how they handle the challenges that i put before them so if, you know i'll I mean, I'm trying to be as strategic as I can when I'm making out inner squad lineups to say, I want to, I want to see Jack Bell against this tough lefty, or I want to, you know, I want to see Grahovic against, against this guy or see how he handles this or that, or move him around. You know, how does Jack Bell handle just his body language? How's he handle not playing shortstop? How's he, let's move him over to third base. Does he, and Jack's inquisitive. He asks questions. Sorrell, you know, most high school outfielders start off by they're in center field they come to college and they may not play center like jace did in the last year so uh, how they've handled everything to today october the 5th uh has been awesome um that's not the end all we all know that when the lights come on friday uh, when the lights come on in the season things can go better or things can get worse uh, but i'm very confident in who and who they are as people uh, and they're already talented I want to follow that up with Brandon Montgomery. Big splash when he was able to transfer here. Just how has he acclimated himself? Has he been exactly what you expected? Yeah, he's been he's been way more than what I've. Ex well, I just didn't know him. You know, you don't really know him. And and what I told him when we recruited him is, I don't want this to be. I don't want a transactional relationship with a player. I don't want this to be. Hey, you come here and you give us this, and we'll give you this. And then at, in June, hopefully in Omaha, we'll say goodbye to each other and good luck in pro ball. I want this to be a transformational thing. I want you. I, I need you to dive into being an Aggie, and and you really this time next year, man, you're gonna miss this. Where is Bama vulnerable, guys? Who wants to start it off? I'll be happy to. They're okay. vulnerable in their 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 offensive line versus our defensive line is going to be the matchup that I think that wins the game ultimately. I mean, truly, I mean that's the that will be the key. Uh, you, do you, you mean I've heard people all week talking about do you pressure? Do you try to pressure Milro because when you pressure him, that's when he escapes right, and right. runs. And when he's in the pocket is when he's when he's not at his best. But at the same time. When we don't pressure, we see what happens to us. But so, he's not Tyler Van Dyke. He's not Tyler Van Dyke. So that's the. But we've we've won by pressuring the quarterback. Do you go go away from what's been the successful? You got to pressure him recipe and just stay disciplined. Right? You got to have some. Yeah, I think you saw the blueprint uh, last week against Arkansas. And Who's our fastest, most athletic linebacker? That spot have a spy. Something York, like that? York, I don't know. York spied a lot last week, but what York was doing that I thought was I just noticed it on a couple different plays we're blitzing from one side and the spy is sitting on the other side so the quarterback if we're blitzing from our right the quarterback's natural inclination is to leak out away from that and our spy's sitting there waiting on him yeah and we did it several times against kj jefferson i mean it's kj's a mobile like quarterback and then what was the what was the guy's name from auburn uh, uh, came in the second half? no the second the, uh, oh uh robbie ash robbie ash yeah and he's athletic he he, he he's looks really like milro he just can't throw he runs though like that and we we bottled him up too so um by the way, Bama, according to Randall and Salado, Vegas has Bama now minus one. I don't know if that the line it has was moved. one and a half. Really, so it's moved to one, which means everybody's putting money. They're on getting the Milro news out there in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, Vegas, if somebody in Vegas says Milro's out, that's legitimate. <laughs> Vegas knows everything. Yeah. Well, again, let's just. Well, <laughs> whoever's out there, I, I feel very good about our Hey, breaking news, line. you heard it right here. Yeah. No, yeah, that's show. right. <laughs> yeah, slow down. Vegas, no. If Vegas has Miller out, Miller's out. All right, friends, who's going to tell us what to do? Like, share, subscribe, comment, and click the notification bell. So you you didn't say it with the energy another, that I expected. Ne never miss another Tex Ags Rewind. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, especially I, this I, week. It's a gigum button. You I, need to click that. I, I just want to say that that was so good. We might need to get him to host it for an hour. I, so. Uh, so the reason I said if they win by what was the score you said? So I, I'm saying, and again, I know how stupid this sounds, but I say <laughs> we're going to win 24-6. I say we're going to actually win comfortably. And, I and said, David said he can host the fans. No, no, no. Week. I said if... If they win 24 to 6, he gets to sit in this chair. Oh, and I'm host and ask too. the questions if he does the research. I might, oh. not, I might not wear pants either. We just canceled the fan show. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>